My name is A. K. Suresh and uh, I am from the Department of Chemical Engineering at uh, IIT Bombay. In the next few lectures, I will be talking about uh, an important class of heterogeneous reactions, namely gas liquid reactions. Now, these are important uh, from an industrial point of view as well as from an academic point of view. Uh, from an industrial point of view, because uh, industry uses these reactions for two important objectives. One is to uh, do a gas cleanup, uh, for example, removal of carbon dioxide from flue gases uh, and uh, removal of uh, uh, catalyst poisons uh, such as H2S, etcetera, or carbon monoxide uh, from gas streams which are to be subjected to uh, any further reaction steps. And the second objective is uh, uh, to make products of uh, commercial value such as for example, absorption of uh, sulfur trioxide in uh, sulfuric acid to produce oleum, uh, absorption of uh, nitrogen oxides in uh, water to produce nitric acid and so on. Uh, they are important from a, a, an academic point of view, because there are more complex three phase systems or uh, even more complex multi phase systems, whose analysis uh, runs in a similar manner to the analysis of gas liquid reactions. Um, let us provide some context, so uh, you can see uh, where this uh, uh, class of reactions fits into the general landscape of reaction engineering that uh, you have been uh, uh, seeing so far. When we study reactions, we usually begin with the simplest class of reactions, which is homogeneous reactions. Now, uh, these are uh, reactions in which everything is in the same phase, all the uh, reactants and products and catalysts if there are some, uh, they are all in the same phase and the reaction uh, expressions turn out to be simple. They are often of the type uh, uh, you know C A raise to M and C B raise to N uh, type of rate expressions. Let us take an example such as uh, a reaction A in the liquid phase reacting with B in the liquid phase, lower case B being the stoichiometric factor giving C also in the liquid phase. So, this is a liquid phase reaction, because the reactants as well as the product uh, and if there is a catalyst, the catalyst as well are all present in the liquid phase. Now, such reactions you have seen before and they are often analyzed using expressions of this type. And uh, the analysis is simple the experiments to recover the values of k, m and n are straightforward to uh, set up and uh, interpret. And the design of reactions using these kinds of rate expressions is also relatively straightforward. Now, the method of analysis that we use for these kinds of reactions can also be extended to a simple heterogeneous systems. simple heterogeneous systems, as long as the uh, species influencing the rate, influencing the rate are in one phase. So, what I am saying is, in this reaction for example, the rate expression contains the concentration of A and the concentration of B. And as long as the uh, uh, as A and B are present in the same phase, it does not really matter whether C uh, is in the same phase or not. It might volatilize uh, being a volatile product or it might precipitate out of the phase, but the method of analysis is essentially the same as if uh, C was also in the uh, same phase. However, uh, the matters get somewhat complicated when the reactants and catalyst if there is one are distributed among different phases. The simplest of, uh, uh, so these are what are called as heterogeneous reactions as you know and the simplest of these reactions. So, let us say heterogeneous reactions and the simplest of these are those in which there is a continuous phase and there is a dispersed phase and there are just two phases. 
Now, we have already seen uh, one class of such reactions, which are gas solid reactions. And in gas solid reactions, you have seen two types. One is catalytic, in which case you model the diffusion in the uh, uh, pores of the uh, solid catalyst and uh, you recover a concentration profile of the diffusing reactant and use that to construct what is known as an effectiveness factor, which is a factor that modifies the intrinsic rate. Uh, on the other hand, you have also studied non catalytic gas solid reactions, which further can be grouped into uh, models in which uh, or situations in which the reaction takes place uh, at a front and this leads to the shrinking core type of models. And you have also seen reactions in which the reaction takes place throughout the solid and uh, these are uh, these reactions are described by what are called as uniform uh, reaction model, uniform concentration models. In uh, the catalytic uh, uh, reactions as well as the uh, uniform reaction models, we will call this URM uniform reaction models. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, you are modeling the concentration profile through the uh, solid and for uh, uh, purposes of simplicity, you can treat the solid uh, particles to be spherical in shape and then uh, you write the diffusion equation for a sphere, uh, get the concentration profile diffusion with reaction. Uh, get the concentration profile and differentiate the concentration profile at the surface to find out the rate at which the uh, reactant is entering into the solid, which is the rate, rate at which the um, reactant is being consumed by reaction. Now, whether it is a, uh, catalytic, whether it is non catalytic, whether it is shrinking core, whether it is uniform reaction, the point to be noted is that the reactions are in the dispersed phase the reactions are in the dispersed phase, which happens to be solid in this particular case. By contrast, the type of reactions that we are uh, going to study now, which are gas liquid reactions are those in which the reaction is in the continuous phase. This is because the normal situation with uh, gas liquid systems is uh, for example, a, a gas uh, being bubbled through a, a, a column of liquid, uh, which may be being stirred as in a sparge and stirred reactor or which may be being stirred by the flow of the gas itself, such as in a bubble column. Also, there are uh, equipment such as uh, uh, packed beds and so on. Um, where also where uh, you can say that there are both the gas phase and the liquid phase are continuous, but the point is that the reaction is in the continuous phase, which is the liquid phase. So, here the uh, although the although conceptually the uh, uh, issues are very similar to the case of gas solid reactions, the uh, 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 method of analysis analysis has historically evolved in a different way. What is considered uh, for example, in the case of gas solid reactions, which uh, I talked about a minute earlier is that the reaction is taken as the basic process. There is a certain reaction that takes place at a certain intrinsic rate and the rate of that reaction is modified downwards. That is, it is decreased by the influence of transport factors by the fact that the transport is not able to cope up with the velocity of reaction under all circumstances. So, there is an effectiveness factor which is which has a value less than 1, which multiplies the intrinsic reaction rate and uh, uh, you get the actual rate of reaction. Whereas, in the case of uh, the uh, gas liquid reactions, which we are going to consider now, what is taken as the basic process is the process of uh, mass transfer. That is, uh, there is a gas, there is a liquid, there is a process of mass transfer that can occur whether or not there is a reaction that is taking place. But if this uh, substance from the gas phase that is dissolving in the liquid phase uh, has a reactant within the liquid phase to react with, then the occurrence of the reaction will speed up the rate of mass transfer. So, there is the basic process of mass transfer, which is speeded up by the occurrence of chemical reaction. Uh, 
contrast this with the situation in the uh, heterogeneous catalysis case, where there is the reaction which is slowed down by the occurrence of mass transfer uh, or by the existence of mass transfer limitations. So, this is a difference in perspective that needs to be understood, uh, because here we are going to talk about enhancement factors, which have values uh, more than one, which multiply the basic mass transfer rate to give you the rate at which the gaseous solute is being consumed. So, the basic process being uh, mass transfer, we need to understand the uh, theories of mass transfer, at least we need to revisit the theories of mass transfer. because these theories provide a mechanistic basis and uh, that mechanistic basis uh, serves us in good stead when we want to include a reaction uh, in the works. So, uh, there are basically um, two theories of mass transfer that we will consider, one of which is called as the film theory and the second of which is actually a class of theory, it is not a single theory. Uh, and uh, that class of theories we will call as the surface renewal theory. Uh, now, in what I am going to be uh, talking from now on, I am talking about the processes which are occurring in at any particular location in an equipment like this. Okay. For the sake of concreteness, let us take bubble column as our uh, equipment. Now, this is a, a, a cylindrical vessel such as this and gas is being continuously bubbled through and the liquid may be in continuous flow or may be uh, sitting there getting converted, it may be batch. Uh, so, the gas inside the bubble column exists in the uh, form of bubbles of various sizes and because of the churning action of the bubbles, the liquid is in a state of agitation, there is a state of turbulence and uh, what we are talking about is the events that occur uh, at any particular position in the uh, in this kind of an equipment. For example, say a particular location on the surface of a bubble at which uh, um, absorption of the uh, uh, gaseous component A is occurring into the liquid. Okay. So, the gas contains a solute A which is uh, 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 soluble in the liquid and uh, so there is no reaction for now. So, the uh, A, A dissolves in the liquid and diffuses into the liquid that is the process that we are considering. So, the first uh, model that we will consider and additionally I must also mention that in such a process uh, from your knowledge of mass transfer, you know that there is a gas phase resistance uh, and there is a liquid phase resistance. In order to keep matter simple, we will assume that uh, there is no gas phase resistance in the, uh, in the initial discussion. Okay. We will look at the consequences of including a gas phase resistance towards the end of the, uh, this set of lectures. So, with those uh, assumptions, now we are ready to consider uh, uh, both uh, types of uh, uh, visualization which uh, have appeared in the literature. The first one, as I said, is called the film theory. Now, in film theory, the uh, situation is assumed to be something like this. This is the gas liquid interface, the solid line here is the gas liquid interface. On this side is the gas, this is part of the bubble and on this side is the liquid which is in turbulent uh, motion and what is assumed in the film theory is that the entire resistance to mass transfer is located in a thin film which is shown by uh, as the region between the solid line and the dashed line here. Okay. So, this is called as the film and outside the film the concentration of the solute or concentration of whatever there is in the liquid is assumed to be uniform uh, by the uh, and it is kept uniform by the action of turbulence. There is uh, assumed to be an equilibrium at the gas liquid interface itself. In other words, the concentration on the liquid side of the interface which I have called as C A star here is in equilibrium with the partial pressure of A on the gas side of the interface which is assumed to be known because we are assuming that there is no gradients in the partial pressure, there is no mass transfer resistance on the gas side. So, um, and uh, this region, uh, this thickness of the film is usually uh, denoted by the symbol delta, the Greek symbol delta and uh, it is assumed that there is no uh, turbulence or there is no motion of any kind 
within this uh, uh, region delta. In other words, this film is uh, assumed to be essentially stagnant and it absorbs uh, the gas by a process of steady state diffusion. Steady state because irrespective of whether the entire bubble column is operating at steady state or unsteady state, the film is always assumed to be in a state of what is called as quasi steady state. What it means is that because the volume of the liquid within the uh, film is so small, the contents of the film get adjusted to any changes that are happening outside on an instantaneous basis. And therefore, the diffusing species always feels as though conditions are not changing, the conditions are steady. Okay. So, what we have said so far is that uh, there is a uh, film and the film is stagnant and the film is of thickness delta and the diffusion process within the film is steady state molecular diffusion. That is because turbulence cannot penetrate into the film. Okay. The effect of turbulence is only felt outside the film in the liquid bulk. So, with these assumptions, the governing differential equation is easy to write. You can either uh, make a shell balance as you have done for example, in uh, transport phenomena. You can refer to the uh, pages on mass transfer in Burr Stewart Lightfoot, uh, if you need to refresh that, that part of the um, uh, syllabus. Uh, basically, the continuity equation for A is given by d a d squared c a by d x squared equals 0, which basically says that if you take any you know in the film that I, I showed of thickness delta, this is the x direction that is the direction away from the gas liquid interface is the x direction and that the diffusion is assumed to be unidimensional, uh, unidirectional and uh, what we are saying here is that if you if you take a an infinitesimal element here of thickness d x, then whatever is entering at this point must equal the rate at which material is leaving at that point, because there is nothing uh, no accumulation this being steady state and there is no reaction therefore, there is no consumption. So, this is the differential equation that uh, that uh, describes the transport of A through the film. In this uh, d a is the diffusivity of a through the liquid dissolved a through the liquid. Now, this being a second order differential equation requires two conditions two boundary conditions in order to uh, formulate it completely and those conditions are given by saying that at x is equal to 0 which is the gas liquid interface the concentration of a is equal to concentration of a in equilibrium with the partial pressure on the gas side of the gas liquid interface and at x is equal to delta the concentration of A is equal to C A B which is the concentration of A in the bulk of the liquid. So, this is a particularly simple differential equation to solve and uh, what it is essentially saying is that the second derivative of the concentration with respect to x is 0. If the second derivative is 0 the first derivative must be a constant and if the first derivative is a constant the concentration profile is a straight line. So, the solution to this equation is can be shown graphically in this manner. So, this is x is equal to 0, this is x is equal to delta and there is a straight line profile that stretches from C A star at the gas liquid interface to C A bulk at the edge of the film the uh, particular equation that this follows is C A equals C A star minus C A star minus C A B divided by delta multiplied by x. You can easily verify that this is a straight line, it is linear in x and at x is equal to 0, this gives C A is equal to C A star if you put x is equal to delta C A star will cancel and you get C A is equal to C A B. So, it satisfies the differential equation, it satisfies the two boundary conditions and therefore, this is the solution. What we are interested in 
is the rate at which gas is entering the liquid in the gas li at the gas liquid interface and that is denoted by an A the flux of A in units of moles of A per unit area per unit time and this is given by minus d A d C A by d x which is fixed law. So, d C A by d x to be evaluated at x is equal to 0 because that is where we want the flux and d C A by d x is uh, evaluated in a straightforward manner from the linear equation and uh, we obtain if you did the uh, simple uh, differentiation you will get this equation. Let me write that again n a equals d a divided by delta into c a star minus c a b. Compare this with the usual uh, way in which uh, mass transfer into turbulent liquids is uh, described in terms of a mass transfer coefficient and a driving force. and comparing these two we are arrive at the interpretation of the mass transfer coefficient in the film theory uh, paradigm as k l is equal to d a by delta. So, what this says is that the mass transfer coefficient varies uh, in direct proportion to the diffusivity of a in the liquid and it varies in inverse proportion to the um, film thickness. In spite of its appearance, this is not an equation that you can use to predict the value of k l, because the value of delta is unknown. All you can say is that the stronger the turbulence, the more intense the turbulence, the thinner is the film uh, expected to be, because turbulen turbulence can uh, now reach closer to the interface. Beyond that, it is very difficult to uh, calculate a value of delta given the conditions of the um, you know let us say power input or whatever uh, in the uh, into the liquid. So, this equation is as much a definition of k l as it is a definition of delta. So, there is no way in which you can uh, calculate a value of delta and uh, therefore, calculate a value of k l. This should be uh, taken as uh, saying uh, that uh, the only way to uh, calculate delta is to actually measure the mass transfer coefficient experimentally and use this equation to calculate delta. So, then what is the use of this equation? It makes one testable prediction that the uh, mass transfer coefficient is proportional to d a. How does this prediction bear out in practice? It turns out that uh, um, the diffusivities of gases in liquids do not vary over a very wide range. So, it is not the straight for, not the most straightforward of matters to actually test this uh, uh, equation rigorously, but available data indicate that k l is actually proportional to d a to the power n, where n has a value that varies between 0 0.5 and 0 0.67. In other words, it is less than proportional to the uh, um, value of the diffusivity. So, this is what experiments indicate to the extent that we can uh, make out what the experiments are saying. So, now uh, let us proceed to the uh, second theory and this as I said is not a single theory, but this is known as we will call this as surface renewal theories. and we will make use of this nomenclature surface renewal to indicate that the uh, picture of the gas liquid interface in this theory or in this class of theories is one of uh, uh, is something that is constant constantly being renewed. So, material uh, from the bulk of the liquid is constantly being brought to the interface and is constantly being removed from the interface and mixed into the bulk. So, in this surface renewal theory uh, under this uh, heading of surface renewal theories, uh, we will consider uh, two variations. 
one due to Higby and the second due to Dankwartz. The Higby version of the surface renewal theory is also called as penetration theory and Dankwartz's uh, uh, version of the theory is simply called as Dankwartz's surface renewal theory. So, irrespective of whether we uh, are talking about the Higby theory or the Dankworth theory, all surface renewal theory, I mean there are other uh, versions of the surface renewal theory as well, uh, but these are the more classical ones and uh, it is enough for our purpose to uh, really understand these two theories, because uh, as we will see later, there is uh, uh, no qualitative uh, difference between these theories and various other theories that have later been proposed. Um, so, irrespective of whether we are talking about Higby theory and the Dankworth's uh, theory, the development is uh, identical up to a point and it is only uh, at the late uh, stages of the theory that we have to invoke um, an assumption which will distinguish the Higby theory from the Dankworth's theory. So, let us uh, uh, proceed with the development. Here, what is uh, assumed is that the picture at the gas liquid interface is something like this. So, here this bold line once again is the gas liquid interface, which is part of the surface of a bubble as we have considered earlier. So, what is assumed here is that the liquid bulk, which is in a state of constant churning because of uh, uh, either agitation or because of gas flow or other means of uh, creating turbulence. And the action of this turbulence is essentially to throw elements of liquid onto the surface that is what this arrow indicates. So, elements of uh, uh, liquid from the liquid bulk are thrown onto the liquid uh, gas liquid interface and once there they spend a length of time which we call as the residence time of the surface element. And at the end of that time they are removed from the surface and then recycled to the bulk. While they are uh, residing at the interface, they are in direct contact with uh, uh, a surface element is in direct contact with the uh, gas phase solute, um, which is on this side and the gas phase solute we have called A and A has a concentration of C A star at uh, inside the uh, inside the element at the gas liquid interface. In other words, what we are saying is that the moment the uh, liquid element lands at the gas liquid interface, the interface achieves equilibrium with the gas phase and from there on the uh, uh, solute tries to diffuse into the um, liquid in, into the liquid element as for as long as the element is uh, at the surface. Once the element leaves the surface, it is mixed up with the liquid bulk and the concentrations are evened out. So, while the liquid element is uh, at the uh, gas liquid interface, what is taking place is a state is a process of unsteady state. Uh, diffusion, instead unsteady state Fickian diffusion. Contrast this with the situation earlier, where the the uh, uh, process that we considered was a steady state Fickian diffusion process. So, and we are saying that on the microscopic scale at any particular location at the gas liquid interface, the process is uh, a, an unsteady state Fickian diffusion process, irrespective of whether the macroscopic process in the entire equipment is taking place at a steady state or unsteady state. This is to be clearly understood because we are here talking about local rate uh, phenomena only. So, that is what the, uh, the concentration profiles uh, shown as dashed lines here indicate. The as time uh, progresses, as the element spends more and more time at the uh, interface, the concentration profiles proceed into the liquid in that manner. So, what is the and also uh, Another important assumption here is that the time for which the uh, liquid element resides at the interface is so short uh, that the and the uh, penetration of the gaseous solute so small that the um, penetration is confined to a region that is close to the interface. So, for all practical purposes the liquid element may be considered to be infinite in depth. So, what is the uh, governing differential equation then? So, we have to write the unsteady state balance for A and that is shown in that manner. It is the same equation except that 
the difference in the input minus the output for any differential element is equal to the accumulation here, because we are considering an unsteady state process. So, here x is that direction away from the interface as before. So, this is now a partial differential equation first order in time and second order in x and therefore, we need an initial condition and two boundary conditions. The initial condition is specified by saying that at t equal to 0, the concentration at the, the concentration everywhere within the element is equal to the bulk concentration. So, at time equal to 0, the element has just landed at the gas liquid interface and throughout the element, the concentration is equal to uh, the bulk concentration, which is where it came from. At t greater than 0, we have the first boundary condition at x is equal to 0, we have C a equal to C a star. In other words, what we are saying is that the moment the uh, element arrives at the interface, at the gas liquid interface, the concentration achieves equilibrium. And at t greater than 0, as x tends to infinity, remember that the uh, element can be considered to be infinitely deep, because the gas does not get to penetrate anywhere near the uh, far end of the uh, element. So, as x tends to infinity, the concentration is unchanged. It is the same as what it was at the beginning of the process. So, this is the differential equation and the governing, this is the governing differential equation and the initial and boundary conditions. Now, you might have seen these kinds of equations uh, in your transport phenomena course again, either in uh, uh, momentum transport or heat transport or mass transport. And uh, uh, these are amenable to solution by a technique called as similarity transformation. What you notice is that the conditions at t equal to 0 and x equal to infinity are identical. At t equal to 0, the concentration is equal to C a b for all x. At x equal to infinity for all time, the concentration is once again equal to the same value. This suggests that you might be able to define a, a variable, which is a combination of x divided by t to the power alpha, such that the by replacing by uh, doing the transformation in terms of this combined variable, we will be able to eliminate t and x completely and have any uh, have a single ordinary differential equation in terms of xi alone. So, you can see that the basis for this uh, comes from the fact that uh, this works for an equation of this kind number 1 and number 2 uh, at whether x is equal to 0 or uh, whether t equal to 0 or x is equal to infinity xi has the value, value of infinity and at uh, that value the concentrations are the same. So, the value of alpha which makes this transformation work can be calculated by substituting this into the differential equation and then find uh, looking for such a value of uh, alpha the, uh, so that uh, x and t do not occur uh, except as the group of x divided by uh, t to the power alpha. It turns out that the value of alpha that does the job is a half or you can deal with a variable of the type x divided by root t. And in order to eliminate some constants, what is normally done is this variable is used in order to uh, transform the partial differential equation to an ordinary differential equation. Now, I will not go through the details of the uh, 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 derivation. This can be if you uh, substitute this into the um, uh, differential equation here it gets transformed to an ordinary differential equation, which turns out to be fairly simple to solve. Now, once you have done that, you get an equation for concentration, which is an error function. So, it is actually C a minus C a bulk divided by C a star minus C a bulk equals 
error function complement of x divided by 4 d a t. This error function complement is nothing but 1 minus error function of x divided by 4 d a t and error function itself is defined as 2 by root pi 0 to u e to the power minus uh, let us say t squared d t. So, that is the definition of error function. So, error function is a tabulated function you will find this for various values of u tabulated in uh, mathematical handbooks. So, you have got this as the concentration profile and if you plot this concentration profile for various values of uh, time you will get a picture that is something like this. So, you have x and all concentration profiles start with C A star as soon as the element uh, uh, lands at the interface it has a profile that is something like this that is a t equal to 0 at larger values of time you have concentration profiles developing in that manner as t increases. From these concentration profiles, we can calculate the instantaneous rate of absorption in a surface element which has spent let us say t seconds at the interface. We do this by uh, applying Fick's law as usual except that in this case because we are dealing with a concentration profile that is a function of x as well as t, we have to use the partial derivative of concentration with respect to x evaluated at x equal to 0. So, we do this as follows, we have the concentration profile as given by this expression here. If we differentiate this, we get d c a upon d x, we have to differentiate the error function here. So, we get first of all C A star minus C A B and as usual we apply the chain rule of differentiation, differentiate the error function with respect to the argument and then differentiate the argument with respect to x. So, when we do that the first differentiation of the error function with respect to the argument is simply the integrand itself evaluated at the upper limit. So, we get that as 2 by root pi e to the power minus x squared divided by 4 d a t and differentiating the uh, argument with respect to x we get 1 by square root of 4 d a t. So, the 2 will cancel with the uh, the square root of 4 here and this whole thing has to be evaluated at x equal to 0, which means that we get there is a negative sign as well coming from the fact that we have the error function complement and uh, so we get minus C A star minus C A B 1 over root pi d a t and uh, substituting this in that expression over here, we will get n a i of t as square root of d a upon pi t c a star minus c a b. So, this is the rate of absorption in an element which has spent let us say t seconds at the interface. So, now let us step back a moment and uh, take stock at what we are trying to do. So, we started with an operating piece of equipment such as the bubble column 
And then we said that we want to understand the local phenomena which are taking place at any location in this bubble column. Let us say at a particular point on the surface of a typical bubble. Now, we are saying that even that particular point on the surface of a typical bubble is itself composed of several thousands of these uh, what we have called surface elements and each of these elements has spent a different length of time uh, absorbing at the interface. In other words, the interface itself can be pictured you know this particular location on the surface of a bubble that we are talking about. Uh, if I want to uh, if I were to spread that out in this manner then it is nothing but a mosaic of surface elements which I can picture like this. Some of these surface elements might have just arrived some of these might have arrived a little earlier and so on and there are those elements which are about to leave right. So, there are short lived elements there are I mean there are uh, elements which have just arrived there are elements which have been absorbing for some time and there are elements which have been there a long time. Uh, so, what we have calculated on the previous slide is the absorption rate in a typical element of this kind which is of age t. So, this absorbs we said at this rate. Now, if you want to calculate the rate at which the entire surface is absorbing, then we need to know what part of the surface is how old. In other words, what fraction of the uh, surface elements that make up this uh, uh, unit interface have spent what length of time at the interface. So, in order to do this, we define the age distribution function i of t d t, which is the fraction of all surface elements of age t to t plus d t. If we define this internal age distribution as it is called, then the average rate of absorption by the entire surface or average flux of absorption is given by integrating the instantaneous uh, rate of absorption with respect to time weighted with the internal age distribution function. So, what we are saying here is that this is the rate at which uh, an element of age t is absorbing and this is the fraction of the surface which is of age t and therefore, the average rate of absorption of the entire surface is given by this uh, expression. Now, what do we use for this function i of t? So, this is where the difference between uh, Higby theory and uh, Dankworth's theory plays out. So, we will consider these two concepts one by one. So, if we consider the Higby's version of the surface renewal theory. What he said was that every element of uh, every surface element, every surface element spends exactly the same length of time at the interface, spends the same time and let us call that as T b at the interface this is a central assumption. So, if you look at this assumption, this is what happens in plug flow. An element enters into a plug flow environment spends exactly uh, a preordained amount of time which is decided by the volume of the plug flow environment divided by the volumetric flow rate and then it leaves. So, since every liquid element is spending the same length of time at the interface. So, as we have said this is similar to plug flow we can use the internal age distribution of a plug flow environment for i of t d t in order to calculate the average flux. Now, if you 
go back to the residence time distribution theory, then um, you will uh, recall that for a plug flow vessel for a plug flow environment, the I of t function has this form, it is 1 over T b for T less than or equal to T b and it is equal to 0 if T is greater than T b. Graphically, this looks something like this, if you are plotting i as a function of time, there is a time T b and this is the kind of distribution that we are talking about. There is nothing of age greater than T b and less than T b uh, for every age there is an equal uh, fraction. So, this is what is the uh, internal age distribution for a plug flow vessel and using this we can calculate N a as N a i which is square root of d a by pi t multiplied by the internal age distribution and integrated from 0 to T b because outside of T b for all times greater than T b this function is 0. So, this is quite easy to evaluate uh, I have forgotten the C a star minus C b C a b which is of course, there. So, what we get is 1 over T b square root of d a by pi C a star minus C a b integral of 1 over root t d t 0 to t b. So, if you perform this integration the result is square root of 4 d a by pi t b into C a star minus C a b. Comparing this with the usual mass transfer rate expression, we find that the mass transfer coefficient in this theory is interpreted as 4 d a by pi t b. So, this has two things to say that k l is proportional to square root of d a number 1 and k l is inversely proportional to 1 over square root of the mean residence time at the interface. Now, Higby was led to this model by consideration of a single bubble that rises through a quiescent column of liquid. So, if you have a quiescent column of liquid and let a single bubble uh, rise in such a column then uh, it is easy to imagine that for every bubble new liquid uh, meets the bubble at the north pole, slides down the surface of the bubble and disengages from the bubble at the south pole. So, if this is the kind of uh, manner of contacting between gas and liquid, then you can calculate that the time for which the gas uh, is in contact with any element of liquid is nothing but the diameter of the bubble divided by the rise velocity of the bubble. So, for these situations you can actually calculate T b from these kinds of considerations and plug it into this expression here and therefore, you can actually do a prediction of k l. So, if you do that it turns out that the, the results are quite in accord with the uh, uh, experimental data and this equation bears itself out quite creditably. But, uh, you can do this kind of a calculation of T b only for very simple situations such as this and uh, the actual situation in an operating pace piece of uh, process equipment is far more complex. The bubbles are uh, do not rise in a single straight line, they are moving in zigzag uh, uh, ways all over the place. The liquid is not quiescent, the liquid itself is in turbulent motion and in addition there are uh, coalescence and redispersion processes to which the bubbles are subject. So, in this kind of a complex situation it is not possible to calculate the value of T b from first principles. So, we should uh, regard in those kinds of situations 
the equation as providing a definition for T b as much as the equation provides a definition for K l. In other words, what I am saying is T b is to be regarded as a fitting parameter to be calculated from experimentally measured values of K l. So, if that is the case, then this equation leaves us with just one testable um, prediction that is K l is proportional to square root of diffusivity. And as we have already remarked at the beginning of uh, um, while dealing with uh, film theory, um, this is quite in accordance with uh, experimental data. So, experimental data do bear out that the ma mass transfer coefficients are proportional to something like the square root of diffusivity. Now, let us look at what Dankworth uh, had to say about the surface age distribution and how the predictions of that theory are different from the Higbee's theory. So, Dankworth's surface renewal theory. So, what Dankworth said was the Higbee's concept of uh, plug flow of surface elements and uh, uh, every element spending an exactly equal uh, length of time at the interface is all right for very simple situations as single bubbles rising through the uh, acquiescent column of liquid. But in actual operating uh, pieces of equipment, the situation being far more complex, elements of liquid are uh, landing randomly at the interface and they are randomly being taken away from the interface. So, the situation here is far more like in a well mixed vessel and uh, very different from what it is in a plug flow vessel. So, he said that why do not we look at the gas liquid interface as though it was a well mixed environment. If that is the case, we turn back to the residence time distribution theory and see what it has to say about the distribution of internal ages for well mixed environments. And there we come upon this kind of an expression I of t for a well mixed environment I of t is given by 1 over T b e to the power minus T upon T b or this is written in the language of uh, Dankworth's theory in that manner, where S what Dankworth called as a surface renewal rate is nothing but the reciprocal of the mean residence time. So, that is the uh, internal age distribution that we have to use uh, in conjunction with the instantaneous rate of absorption in order to predict the average rate of absorption, which therefore, for this theory takes on this form d a divided by pi t that is the instantaneous rate of absorption multiplied by s into e to the power minus s t d t. The whole thing integrated from 0 to infinity and we have to add the driving force term which is part of the n a i t d a by pi t under the square root multiplied by c a star minus c a v. So, when we do this, so this you know if we take the constant elements out, then we see that it is nothing but square root of d a upon pi c a star minus c a b into s integral 0 to infinity 1 over root t e to the power minus s t d t. Now, the simplest way to evaluate this integral is to recognize that this is nothing but the Laplace transform of 1 over square root of t. So, if you look up the Laplace transform of 1 over square root of t from a table of Laplace transforms and substitute, we will find that this amounts to root of uh, d a s multiplied by c a star minus c a v. Comparing this with the mass transfer rate expression, we find that the Dankworth theory predicts k l as being able being equal to square root of d a s. So, we have this and we have the earlier expression due to Higby and if we compare this and this, two things are obvious. One is the square root of d a dependence is uh, there in both of them 
and in fact, if you look at the way in which we are doing these integrations, it does not matter, it does not matter as to what you assume for this function i f t d t, the square root of d a dependence comes from within the expression for n a i f t and therefore, that is not going to change irrespective of what you substitute for i f t d t. So, it is not surprising that both Higby and Dankworth's theory uh, predict that k l is proportional to square root of d a and in that respect therefore, there is nothing to distinguish one, one uh, theory from the other. As to the other prediction of whether k l is inversely proportional to uh, square root of t b, both of these uh, do predict an inverse proportionality between square root of t b. There is a constant here that is not very different from 1. Uh, which is the only difference between the um, Higby's theory and the Dankworth's theory. So, all in all there does not seem to be very much that uh, distinguishes the Dankworth's theory from the Higby theory, especially when you consider that this T b is something that uh, cannot be uh, measured from first principles and therefore, um, the only way you can fix T b is to actually go back to a measured value of the mass transfer coefficient. So, we will conclude this section by making some concluding remarks on the two theories that we have seen under the surface renewal category. The first remark we make is that in the surface renewal theories, it is a given that k l is proportional to square root of d a and in that respect these theories are better than the film theory which, pre, pre, which predicts that k l is proportional to uh, d a to the power 1 linearly proportional to d a. And uh, the second thing is that the Higby theory and the Dankworth theory are somewhat similar in terms of their quantitative uh, predictions of the mass transfer coefficient. There being a difference of about 10 percent if the value of T b is exactly known. Given that the value of a uh, T b is not known and it can only be uh, uh, obtained from experiments, uh, there is you can say that the Higby theory and the Dankworth theory are virtually saying the same thing. The third point is if that is the case and the Dankworth theory seems to be more complicated in terms of the internal edge distribution function it uses, why uh, worry about the Dankworth theory at all? The real advantage of the Dankworth theory is mathematical, advantageous nature of Dankworth theory surfaces when you have got linear systems to consider such as the, the uh, simple mass transfer uh, problem that we have considered so far that arises when you look at this integral here and we made the point that the way to evaluate this integral is to recognize the parallel between the averaging process that is going on here and Laplace transformation. So, what this suggests is that if you have a situation in which the governing equations can be solved by Laplace transforming the equation remember that the governing equation in the surface renewal theories is always going to be uh, a partial differential equation. And one of the techniques of solving partial differential equations which are linear is to Laplace transform the equations with respect to time and eliminate time and convert this to an ordinary differential equation. So, if you use that technique and get the uh, equation in the uh, Laplace domain as an ordinary differential equation and solve it. then the uh, required quantities which are the flux, the concentration profile etcetera, the average concentration profile etcetera can be obtained without actually inverting the uh, transform to back to the time domain. And uh, you can work in the Laplace domain as uh, itself and directly obtain the results. So, this uh, gives you an advantage in terms of the uh, mathematical aspects of uh, solving the differential equations that arise. Okay. So, we will uh, conclude by summarizing the important uh, aspects of uh, today's lecture. So, we consider the 
problem of mass transfer or what we may call as physical mass transfer because there is no reaction here into an agitated liquid. Experimentally, this situation is always explained using a uh, uh, mass transfer coefficient and the usual way in which the absorption flux is written is to invoke a mass transfer coefficient and a driving force of this kind. So, this is how experimentally we describe the physical mass transfer into an agitated liquid. So, we considered two theories. One is the film theory and the film theory said that K L is proportional to diffusivity. We considered the surface renewal theories and the surface renewal theory is said that K L is proportional to square root of diffusivity. Now, this is more correct when you uh, look at the evidence that is available of the way in which the mass transfer coefficient depends on diffusivity and this is not so correct. However, the advantage here is that there are ordinary differential equations to solve and here there are partially di partial differential equations to solve. Therefore, from a mathematical point of view, if we can use this theory based on some consideration, it, will, it is going to be always easier to solve. So, we will keep that in mind and uh, in the next lecture, when we take up the effect of chemical reaction on the mass transfer rate, we will first do our deliberations in terms of the film theory. We will disregard for the moment that the film theory is less realistic as compared to the surface renewal theories. We will assume that the film theory is a model that is acceptable in some sense and then we will uh, look at the effect of chemical reaction on the physical mass transfer. We will go through the development and then we will see how the development will differ if we were to use uh, surface renewal theories. Then it will turn out that if all you are interested in is the uh, is in predicting the effect of mass transfer effect on uh, effect on mass transfer of the chemical reaction then one theory is uh, nearly as good as another. Having said that um, there are some uh, kinds of reaction for which the surface renewal variety of theories uh, will give you a better prediction as compared to the film uh, theory. So, we will come to those aspects as we go along, but uh, uh, I have made these comments just to justify my use of the film theory in the initial uh, uh, sections of the consideration of chemical reaction and its effect on mass transfer.